the voice in your ears and the face on your screen. I'm Perfect Purvis, and this is Pro Football Sweden, presented by Rare Athletics. Uh, this is our first year talking about football in Sweden. So again, reach us in the comments. Let us know what's going on. If we're doing good, we're doing bad. We're taking all the notes, and we appreciate you guys tuning in. Welcome to the show, my co-hosts, Jalo Juice and Antoine Allen. What's going on, fellas? What's going, What's going on, on Purvis? Purvis? What's going on, Antoine? <laughs> What's going on, Alpha? Thanks, Jalo Juice. <laughs> Jalo Juice. We're calling Jalo Juice from now on. That's what it is. Jalo Juice. Uh, another shout out to our partners at PFS, Ballers International, RCI. Uh, who else is our partners? Improved Play. I think that's all of them. And of course, you know, American football in Finland, you know, that's how we got this all started. So the PFS podcast is everywhere you listen to podcasts. We're also on YouTube now. Make sure to subscribe, like, follow, connect with us, send us comments, uh, send all your, if you have any complaints, send them to PFS on Instagram at Pro Football Sweden, and they'll handle all that because I don't worry about that too much. But other than that, let's get into some football talk. All right, it's first and 10. This is the time that we take a moment to talk about whatever's going on in our lives. Doesn't necessarily have to be football or anything. Just talk about what's going on with us. Uh, let's start with you, Jalo Juice. What's going on with you lately? I just want to say happy Father's Day to you guys. As I'm here in Spain, it was Father's Day yesterday, and I know we all popless. So happy Father's Day to you guys and everyone else in Spain who's tuning into this. This past weekend, though, had a game. We won, of course. But embarrassingly, I dropped a wide, wide. It was just me and the Lord out there, and I dropped <laughs> it. And I was like, the easy ones. The easy ones are the ones that you drop. But other than that, yeah. you know, I'm blessed. So, Antoine, what's going on with you, buddy? Uh, yeah, nothing much, man. Uh, we got a scrimmage coming up this weekend uh, against the the Starfighters, the one of the teams out of Norway. So um, looking forward to that. But um, yeah, man, just just you know, staying busy, staying active. Um, got a couple of projects that I'm working on behind the scenes um, for different things. But yeah, man, just trying to stay active. All right. Only thing going on with me is these damn podcasts, man. We out here. We getting ready. PFS, we out here doing the podcast. Everybody supporting online. I appreciate all the teams, you know, resharing the content. Uh, some guys, you know, sending comments like, hey, love what you're doing. Start talking to a couple coaches who are like already excited about us doing this for both uh, Sweden and Finland. Um, I know that's not this podcast, but they're kind of connected. So it's really good to get the Nordics, you know, on the map. Uh, everybody in, in Europe, as they call it, that's the mainland. They think that they have this whole, like, media game on lock, and we're here to show them that they don't. So I'm I'm just all in on that right now. That's kind of what I've been doing all week since we last talked is making sure that this podcast is to the level that it needs to be and that we're able to give got people, fans, spectators, whoever's listening and watching in, the best quality content that we can, as well as doing similar type things for what I already have going in Finland. So for me, I'm just excited to get out here and, and talk football with you guys. All right, our players to watch. Uh, this segment is brought to you by Rare Athletics, apparel and accessories, Made for players, by players. Uh, more than just accessories, Rare Athletics also does custom football uniform jerseys. So reach out to Rare today. Go to their web shop. See if they can get something hooked up for you and your team. Uh, just throw out a, a one team in the Super Series who's going to be wearing, you know, nice Rare uniforms. AIK, one of my favorite uniforms. So take a look at what they got going. And if you want your team to have something, you know, similar, just head on over to Rare Athletics. I think the website is rare, R E Y R R dot S E. Okay. So let's get into it, fellas. A lot of talent in the Super Series this season. Uh, we just want to talk about some of the top players. You know, we're not going to get too much into, you know, 
analysis of the players, but we're going to list some guys, some names that people might might know or might not know, but they definitely need to watch going into this season. And I'll start it off with a guy that, I mean, <laughs> if you don't know who he is, you just don't know football in Sweden. And, that's, uh, and I take credit for this guy. I don't care what nobody says. I take credit for him. Matt Retzloff, wide receiver from Stockholm Meme Machines. Again, I'm not sure about the jersey number. I think he's number eight if you're looking for him. I know on social media we're going to put up some photos of the player, so you'll be able to know exactly who we're talking about. But this receiver has been in Stockholm for the last, I want to say, four seasons, and all he's done is help them become um, you know, a juggernaut in the Super Series season. And it's really good to see him back again for another season. And you're going to have to look out for the wide receiver, the number one wide receiver for the Mean Machines. Uh, you guys got any thoughts on Matt Retzloff? Yeah, Matt Retzloff is a dog. I remember the first time I seen him play. And when I was playing in the south of Sweden and get the body, this little white boy can jump. He's fast. <laughs> And he can run routes. But better now that I've seen him as he's uh, developed into um, a man, he's a great leader on the football field. He's assisting the receivers for the past several years with Stockholm Me Machines. He's loving Sweden. And the last thing to mention is that he will not count as an American on the football field this season. So the dynamics... If they bring in another weapon on offense, it's going to make Stockholm's offense already explosive. As you already know, we're going to mention some of the other receivers that Stockholm have. So Matt is a dog, you know. What about you, Antoine? You want to add anything about Retzloff before we move on? Yeah. Matt, uh, he kind of reminds me of like a Julian Edelman type where he's just like he's he's so dynamic and and what he can do. He always, you know, knows where the ball is, knows ball placement, knows how to get his hands around the ball, knows how to catch the ball. That's the most important thing as a receiver. Is uh, catching the ball, um, but yeah, man, he he's just he's just a threat out there. Every time he's on the field, you have to know where he is at all times, or else you're going to get beat. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a player to look out for uh, this upcoming season. I don't want to be too argumentative, but I, I take disrespect to the Julian Edelman comparison. I think he's more of a I, I, I think he's more of a, a Cooper Cup Adam Thielen oh, type. Okay, okay, like he I, has I the size of a Julian. Yeah, he has the size of a Julian Edelman. Yeah, he's short. He's not a tall receiver, but he's not a he's not a like only does the over the middle short route stuff. Like he's a big play receiver. He's a, he's a downfield threat. I mean, if we want to just throw race out there, he's more of a Tyreek Hill type. If anything, <laughs> you know, like he's short. Know. He'll, get, he'll get Tyreek Hill. He'll get Tyreek. I mean, he don't he don't he doesn't not, do things like Tyreek. He doesn't do those like smaller routes though. That's what I'm really saying. Is like he's not that like underneath guy that you think of when you have a, a small receiver. He's more of a like he's gonna do whatever you need from a receiver because he's that dynamic at receiver. I know I, I shouldn't have started with an argument. I ain't trying to, but you know, <laughs> I, I believe Julian Julian Edelman was great, but I believe he was great because he was on the, the Patriots. Hey, I'm gonna say Mass Russloff is Mass Russloff. It's nobody like there you go. There you, you go. know. There you when go. I, I came and played for player. Stockholm, I came and played for Stockholm the year after he left in 2019. I was like, man, I got some big shoes to fill. So mess is mess is dog. Yeah, let's let's just move on to the next guy. Alpha, you take the next guy. You know him a little better than me. Yeah, so the next guy we have on the list is uh Kevin Borsay. Kevin Borsay is playing for a tier or so Royal Clan at 135. And he also played with Cossack Crusaders, and he has been an impact in the Super Series for several years in his young receiver. So be on the lookout for number two for Tirasol Royal Clowns. Yeah, I'll, I'll go in there next. Uh, that's interesting that he's playing for Tirasol because I thought he was a Karlstad guy. Right? Yeah, he did. You know, yeah, all, this the, is, this is all, all the Tirasol guys, it seems like the return of Tirasol when they came mm -hmm. back to the – uh, top division, you know, they was down in division one. So when everybody mm -hmm. saw the Tirso came back up, oh, they just pretty much came back and started their little new dynasty of finishing second place for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I don't want to throw out there. I know of Kevin Borsa. I've seen him play a few times and I've always been impressed with his play. I don't know him as thoroughly as some of these other guys, but I do know that, you know, if I, if I wanted to 
throw the ball to somebody. He's a guy I would trust and think that would be able to make big plays for me. So it's going to be really interesting to see him playing for the one three five. What about yeah. you, Antoine? Yeah, um, he he just he doesn't only impact the game uh, on the offensive end of the ball either. So uh, he was one of the co leaders uh, in interceptions last year uh, at DB. So he makes a difference on the defense as well. So he's very dynamic. He can play both sides of the football, um, and I think he's going to make an impact for TSO. Yeah. And we can just move on to the next guy who's a player that watched for tears. So, and that's Eddie, as, as we call him. Uh, I played with him as well in 2018. I played with him in 2019 and uh, for, you know, with uh, Stockholm Me Machines. Cool. And he's a dog. He also played in America. So uh, he's a young, talented guy as well. And he can be explosive. He's one of the most explosive guys who has the Swedish nationality. So make sure you guys looking out for. Eddie, and I believe he's going to be wearing jersey number number one. So yeah, number one. He's one. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of uh, Eddie, as you call him. I've seen him play a couple of times in the Super Series. And I think I think he was out there in Gothenburg way back when when you were out there. Yeah, exactly. I, I did see him when he came back to Me Machines. I've seen him play on a national team a few times for the Swedish national team. And I've always been impressed with, like you said, the explosion that he has. He has a crazy amount of explosion. So it's going to be really interesting to see him play for the one three five. you know, <laughs> bringing it back to so He's definitely a big play receiver. I think he led the league last year, if I'm not mistaken, in, uh, in points scored. So he's the reigning uh, points mm -hmm. champ. Uh, so that he impacts the game. He's going to score touchdowns. He can get behind you if you let him. Um, and he catches the football. And the most important thing is that when – Watching him play football, like he has fun when he's doing it. He has fun when he's out there on the field. Uh, his his touchdown celebrations are some of the some of the best to watch in the Super Series. So, uh, yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. The good thing about Eddie is that he has swagger too. You know, you're gonna see the one leg sleeve in some games. He's gonna be dancing in the end zone when he makes a play. You know for sure he's gonna hit you one of these <laughs> after you get a first down. So, be ready for that. So he got some flavor. Tirso has flavor. A lot of the guys in Tirso has flavor. All right, what about the next guy? I can't pronounce his name, so someone else has to do it. <laughs> uh, Anton, Anton Caldwell. So uh, he's, a, he, he's a receiver at a Uh He definitely mm. made a lot of plays uh, for them last year at receiver, scored all the points. Uh, I, I, I don't know how old he is. I'm pretty sure he's just a young receiver, but uh, he, he's a sound receiver. He catches the ball well. He runs routes well. And yeah, he's just a difference maker for them. I just looked him up online and it says he's 6'2, 198. That's all I need to know. All right. So, uh, <laughs> was Anton, is that you 6'2, 198? Yeah. All right. I, I believe in you, buddy. I can't wait to see <laughs> it. I, I, know, I know very little about Limham, but I do know they have talent and it's young talent. And if he's some of that young talent, whoo, I'm excited, man. It's definitely be something, yeah. something to watch. So, next up, we got a finish guy you know we call him Crip Bay in Finland seen him play last year he had a breakout season last year it was good to see him playing with portable butchers and it's even better to see him being an import to leave his home country to play with Costa Crusaders so be on the lookout for him I don't know what jersey number he's gonna wear probably gonna be number seven that's what uh he wore when he was in Finland and he's a very young guy he's talented he has good hands he's a a middle threat type guy and also can be a deep threat guy. Don't know how much he's going to be catching screens and things like that. He's not going to be flashy like uh, Eddie or Kevin, but he's going to be a short catcher in the middle of the field. So be on the lookout for Crippe. I can't pronounce his last name, but just call him Crippe when you need to. I'll, I'm going to throw it out there. Christian Naltonen. That's his name. He's the best thing smoking. I don't know much <laughs> about Crossstaff's roster, but if he own it, they got a chance. Now, Alpha said something about his route running, and, you know, I ain't trying. Okay, I'm a little argumentative. I'm sorry. I just I, – I watched him all last season. He was my favorite receiver in the Maple League last year. And if you don't believe me, go listen to any podcast that we put out on AFF last year. Every week he came up. Not because, you know, I just love him that much. He was balling every week for that team. And what he brought to the Butchers last year was he brought the versatility. Like Alpha said, he can do the over-the-middle stuff. He can also do the deep stuff. He's the type of guy that, again, maybe I just like Cooper Cup. That's kind of the versatile receiver he comes off to me is 
a light skinned guy, so he's sneaky fast. People act like just because you're light skinned, you can't be fast. He's fast, so he's a downfield threat at all times, but also he's a damn good route runner. And being a damn good route runner, when you're light skinned, people just assume that you're not that fast because you can run the outs, the digs better than anyone else and get open. He just does what the team needs him to do. And if he's playing for Carlstadt this year, which I mean, obviously he is, they're going to have a a plethora of options that they can do with this guy receiver. Um, he, like you said, he doesn't do a lot of the screen game, but he can run the screen game. But if that's not what the team needs him to do, then he's not worried about it. But he's also strong enough that he could be the blocker for the screen game. But he's also good enough that he can run short inside receiver routes from slot, but also he's dynamic enough. He can go downfield and play wide receiver for you. So I'm excited to see Christian Naltonen play out there in Carlstad this year. All right, that's all I got. I'm done. I'm good. Yeah, for sure. He's going to be somebody that you're going to have to circle on your scouting report. Don't not circle him because if you don't circle him, he's going to circle you. I'm assuming that Antoine don't know much about Christian. So we'll move on to the next guy. This is also another guy that I really like, but I won't talk nearly as much. I might talk a little bit later. I'll just introduce him. Johannes Lindius, a wide receiver from OBK. Yeah, I'm calling him OBK or Brew. Number one on the field and number one in your hearts, Mm -hmm. this guy. Uh, just real quick, I'll, I'll say he, again, is one of those like big-time receivers to me. He's a downfield threat. That makes you a legit number one outside receiver. And what he does for OBK is he gives them that consistency that they need at that position. You can you can trust this guy is going to be able to make plays. Even when they're in games I've seen them lose, he wasn't the reason they were losing. Like He's never – like he always gives yeah. his quarterback and that offense a chance to be dynamic. And he's the same type of speed that they actually do throw him screens and he can take a screen to the house. And that's just really interesting to have somebody that can be, you know, downfield receiver and catch those screens. That's a really complicated skill set to have. And he's not a short guy. So that's really good. That shows how not athleticism, mobility, I guess. Is it like the mobility being able to like do all that and have speed? I mean, we always say athleticism, but he has something a little bit more than athleticism. I don't know what the word is. Alpha, you're you're that type of athlete, so you probably know what it is. Well, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I would just say that um, <laughs> he is their best playmaker on their on their offense. He's mm-hmm. a guy who, if you are going to sleep on him, thinking that you can just put your American DB or somebody like that against him, and you think, oh, he's going to stop him, that's not going to be the case. Johannes, I love seeing him play. He can return kicks. He can return punts. Um, and he is um, dynamic on the football field. He's a nightmare for some coaches to uh, scout. And we can just throw him his little brother as well, not to skip over him, but his little brother has seen an impact on the football field because probably because he's seen his older brother doing it. Jasper is his little brother's name. So to both of these brothers, make sure you guys check out them both on the football field this season for Air Brew. Antoine, yeah, you want to throw anything in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to speak on just. I'm going to speak on both of them as a pair, uh, Johannes and Jesper. So they're both. The way that they run routes is it's it's crazy. It's smooth. Yeah. It's deliberate. It it's uh, last year when I played last year when I played in Costa and we were practicing. Uh, we were preparing for the Udbrew game. Uh, we had the DBs playing ten to twelve yards back, and then. Uh, you know, practicing on all like the deep ball stuff, they can get behind you uh, quickly, and they they always uh, they're they're good options for for Trevor to have uh, back there because just as you're paying attention to the one, one of them one of them is bound to get open. So they both are, are deep ball threats. I think uh, Johannes averaged like 16 yards per catch, and then Jasper averaged like 20 yards per catch last season. So they get down the field and they make big plays. So definitely. Circle both of them on your scouting reports, both of them. And then yeah. <laughs> either way, you got one cover, you might lose on the other end, but cover, try, try to plan for, for both of them to make an impact on the game for sure. Yeah, that's uh, I'm going to throw in my little bit about uh, Jesper as well is number three. I guess he's number three in your heart, but uh, <laughs> close to number one. Uh, I remember when I first saw him on the field with his, with his bigger brother, and I was like, Who's this skinny little shit trying to, you know, imitate out there, trying to imitate Johannes? And then I saw him get get a little, you know, get a little loose a couple of times. 
he's really good um, in and out of his breaks when he's doing his routes. Um, for him, I like to see him do the screen a little bit more than the other the other brother. I guess I don't know. I don't know what their height difference is or anything. They look similar. It's like size and build, but I would say that if I was to say anything that differentiates them, I think Johannes has a little bit more sprint speed, while mm-hmm. Jesper has more um, change direction and explosion in that aspect. Like his route running, him going in and out of his breaks, he, again, I ain't trying to start no fight in the family, but I would say he <laughs> might be better than Johannes in and out of his breaks, you know? And Johannes, if you don't believe me, you know, Ooh. prove me wrong. Prove, I mean, only, only, <laughs> all he can do is prove me wrong. Show me the tape. It's cool. But, uh, oh, you already know there's going to be a fight at home today. After they listen to this, there's going to be a fight. You heard what Pervis said about me? I'm better than you in and out of your breaks. That's coming. <laughs> so, uh, moving on, who's the next guy we got, Alpha? Uh, next, we have Johan uh, Holgren from Stockholm Me Machines. And I think we can just add the other Stockholm Me Machine uh, players as well yeah. and speak on yeah. who you want. So, yeah. Let's go down the list with the next two guys after that. Johan Hilgren, Robin Miranda, and Anton Blugram. And I would just speak one on just Johan, and you guys can mention the other ones. But yeah. Johan, he is extremely quick. He broke down. I'm not going to say the name right now, but he broke down <laughs> one of Oslo Vikings defensive players that we're going to mention later. And it was pretty embarrassing. And that's the type of player that Johan is. He's qu- extremely quick in out of his breaks he's a guy who played at the rig um academy so i know that he has the work ethic he has the training and he's not he, he can be a deep threat guy but he's also dynamic because you can use him in the short game as well and he's going to make those plays and i think if i'm honest like he's way quicker than i am in and out of his uh his route running and you know with his shiftiness on the football field and if you know the type of play style that i am if you Seen some of my highlight tapes in uh, Sweden. Johan is extremely quick, and he's quicker than I am. And I'll say that right here. That, that make, if he's quicker than you, I mean, I mean, he's quick like French quick. toast. He's I got quick, quick, quick. Von, quick, quick. I'll talk about another receiver for Stockholm Meme Machines and Robin Miranda. This guy, known him for a few years since he was a youngster, youngster. He's he's developed through the Meme Machines and. Without doing too much like credit given, I would give a lot of his development credit to Matt Resloff as his receivers coach over the last few years, kind of building up on him. When I first met him, I thought he was a very awkward looking kid, like the way that he ran his routes, the way that he got in and out of his breaks. It was very like, you know, I don't know what to do with my body. And over the last few years, he's developed into an actual like legitimate number two, um, sometimes number three inside slot receiver if he has to be. But he's a guy that you put him on the outside. If you try to like act like he's not that guy, he'll prove you wrong. Um, one thing he really does well for a stock on me machine is when they have to find matchups, they have to find like, hey, what's the matchup we can exploit and how can we get it? He comes up big at big time plays. Now he's not gonna make nearly as many plays as the guy that Antoine's gonna name next, but when he makes a play, it impacts the game. Like he doesn't just, you know, catch those like first downs or maybe just a deep pass every once in a while. Like he'll make a play and it'll change what's happening in the game. And that's because a lot of times people, I think they sleep on him. And that's the reason that he plays so well, because he has nothing to lose. Like people don't expect him to be great. And he goes out there and he's going to be great. And that's what you're going to see from this year. I don't remember what jersey number he's wearing, like 12 or something, I think. Yeah, Antoine. Yeah, I'm uh, saying Anton has 12, so I yeah. can't remember what number Robin has. I always get to, I, I, honestly. Last year, I used to get those two confused on the field when I was watching, and then I'll be like, "Oh no, that's him! Oh no, that's him!" But again, that's what I'm saying about Robin Miranda. Is I think he's a little bit under the radar when you think of like who the best receivers are, especially on the Mean Machine mm-hmm. because they have a really good receiving core. But yeah. you're gonna see him score. He's gonna make plays, and you're gonna know who he is. And then you might forget about him the next play because somebody like Matt Resloff will do something crazy <laughs> and then Anton will do something crazy. But we're still going to watch out for Robin Miranda this season. So I'm going to finish this up with uh, talking about uh, Anton. So he's the random wide receiver of the year uh, for the Super Series. Uh, I think he led the league in receiving yards as well. Uh, he was also the uh, the SM Championship uh, MVP. So everything, everything that 
we've talked about uh, about the Stockholm wide receivers. He he does it and he does it well. So he has breakaway speed. He can get behind you. He makes big plays. He makes catches. He scores touchdowns like crazy. I think in a in the Super Series final he had, I think he had like eight receptions for 183 yards and, and four touchdowns. So he's he's a threat. If if Matt is your one A, then then Anton has to be like your one B. So. No matter who you're trying to cover on the field against Stockholm, they have threats at the wide receiver position. They have one of the best wide receiver cores in the league, and they're going to be tough to game plan against because if you're covering one. Can we call it? Can we, before the season start, we say best would, receiver core would, in Sweden. Yeah. Can we call it? Yeah. 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 I, would, I would say. A hundred percent. And if I can just yeah. add a, two cents to like right. there's two guys that you guys mentioned. You know, Anton, he's the fastest receiver on Stockholm Me Machine's team. He's the fastest. And if I will add just something about Miranda, you know, I seen him progress. And as you said, I think this lot have to do with Matthew Refslaws being there. I seen him go from, let's be real, he was like an average player into like, <laughs> like his built, you know, and he's also the kicker on the team. And oh yeah, like, he does you know, kick. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. And, and you and he is now a legitimate receiver. His hands is so much better. His route running is so much better. Even he has developed with his speed into his route running, you know? I remember the last time I was in Stockholm, it was during the winter time, this past winter, and he was extremely hard to cover. Extremely hard to cover. And he's going to be a problem for defenses. If they think that, oh, we got to worry about Mav, we have to worry about these. You, you, Stockholm Mean Machine's receiving core is 100% the best receiving core that we're going to see. and. The quarterback that they got, he's lucky that he has a plethora of options that he can throw the ball to. Use that term that you use. Hey, you heard it here first on the PFS pod. Stockholm Mean Machines have the best receiving core in Sweden. Yep, we said it. All right, we're still talking offensive players. Let's get into some running backs now. Um, I'll lead this one off. Let me see what running back. I'm going to go Oliver Stett, okay? Oliver Stett running back from Stockholm Me Machines. Last year had an injury, wasn't able to finish the season. That happens. I don't care about that. He's back now, and you have to remember what he did before last season, and that was terrorize the Super Serien League. And he's easily one of the best players in the country, uh, plays national team. But, again, I don't care about that either. When this guy gets the ball, he gets yards. He has speed. He's elusive. He's not a big back, but he's not a weak back. And what's really good about him is that you can give him the ball inside the tackles or outside. He's going to be able to make a play. Also has soft hands and can help you in the receiving game. For the mean machine to have him come back, you're going to just see, like, it's ridiculous that they can – we just talked about their receiving core being so good, but having this guy as one of your premier runners with the ball, it's just unfair to everybody else. And that's all I'm going to say about Oliver. Uh, you guys got anything? Now, I was just going to just simply say Oliver is, is extremely talented running back. You know, I played with him um, in the Scandinavian Cup League when I uh, – and I believe that was 2022. Yeah, that's when the first Scandinavian yep. uh, Cup ever was a thing. And I was extremely – impressed with his patience and just getting in and out of his cuts from the backfield. And as you mentioned that he can catch the ball as well. You know, he's a really talented running back. He's definitely a guy that you have to circle on your uh, game plan as a defensive coordinator. So don't sleep on this guy. Make sure you guys are watching Oliver this year. I hope that he has recovered from his injury last year and he's 100% because we're going to mention another running back from Stockholm. Just surely. I don't have much to add. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm excited to watch uh, Oliver play this year. Um, I did watch him play in 2022, so yeah, I don't really have much to add. But uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and and start on the on the next running back on the list yeah. with uh, Casper. Uh, so everybody knows him because he was um, he played in Utrecht last year. He's a big back. He runs. He runs angry, mean. Uh, he, he runs like a like the old school like 90s running back. But, where he just hits the hole hard, he's gonna run you over. And he he's only gonna average maybe like four yards per carry, but that's that's all you really need. Um so when you get down close to the end zone, um he, he'll definitely be like uh he has like that fullback body type, but he's faster than a fullback. So he'll definitely be able to get the ball in the end zone. 
Uh, he does make plays in the passing game as well. So, yeah, for him to move from Udebru to Stockholm, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one, too. Stockholm has the best receiving core, and it looks like on paper that they have the best running back core as well. So, they got they got some things over there in Stockholm. Yeah, Casper, he's definitely a downhill runner as well. And he's played abroad as well. He played in France and Tanoum. Uh, he had a good success over there. And we all know him for success that he had in Erebro. Uh And I think he had that breakout year in 2018 for Erebro. Mm -hmm. And that's when we all put him on like, wow, he's a really talented running back. Erebro got this. They got a, a good play in the backfield for them. Last thing I'm, I'm going to say about Casper is uh, it's unfair. It is unfair. Uh, when when Stockholm Mean Machine get in like the red zone against anybody, I, I don't want to curse, but you're effed. If, if you're trying to stop like what they have, we've just talked about all the different elements. They have three really good receivers. They have two running backs. You have one that it could be your speed guy, but in the red zone, he could also put it in the middle or you put both of them in. Like you said, Casper has a fullback body. So you don't know like where the ball is going to go in the red zone because there's so many options and Casper makes it, even more difficult once you get to that area because he, like we said before, he's that downhill runner. And having a downhill runner always limits what the defense can do. They have to stop that downhill runner. As much as, you know, it's 2024 and people are like, oh, football is all about passing. Watch football. You always have to stop the run before you stop the pass. And Casper gives them a legitimate threat inside the tackles, in the A-gaps. Like, you have to put some in your in and bring your linebackers down a little bit, and he still hurt him. He still might hurt him because he's fast enough to go outside, and he's strong enough to still get those yards. Like Antoine said, he might get you three yards in a cloud of dust, but that's all you need sometimes. And they have that element in him. And that's what he brings to the team this year. And I just think it's unfair. I don't know if they're breaking some type of rules over there in Stockholm, but it's unfair to have all these guys on the same team, on, on the same field at the same time. There's only one football, so I don't know how they're going to do all this, but they are. So uh, let's move on to the third third running back that we have on here. Lamar Virgo is the new running back from for OBK. Don't know much about Lamar, but I do know that he's going to have to carry the load for a team that likes to run the ball. And if he's able to do that this year, they'll have success. If not, yeah. OBK might not be winning much. Yeah, I just got a question about Lamar. Is Lamar an American? Because it sounds like an American name. All right, we did a little research on Lamar Virgo because we didn't know who he was before. Apparently, he's from the UK. Uh, what was his stats again, Antoine? He's from the UK. He's uh, 5'10", 212, runs at 4'740". So definitely has um, good speed at the running back position. Um, yeah, and he, he's stocky too. 5'10", 212. Yeah. Yeah. What, co yeah, what color is he? <laughs> this is, he uh, he, he was the hour color, guys. He's, he's our he, he looks like that. <laughs> right. He looks like us. It makes a little difference <laughs> on the field how you approach him. I mean, but if he's if he's built like that though, you're you're looking at Orbro who likes to do more of a downhill running scheme. So he's gonna be able to yeah. supply that for them. And so that's really good because that's what they need. They like to do, you know, downhill runs, a couple counters, traps. They they do move their linemen a little bit. Um deep run game then having someone that can you know hit those holes similar to how casper would hit them that's what they're looking for and hopefully he's able to fill that void and give them that this year so it'll be interesting to see and that is the running backs let's get into quarterbacks First up, let's talk Jared Haywood, quarterback from Tiraso. I'll be honest, I don't know nothing about him. He has a strong arm, uh, seems to be athletic, but that could just be because of his skin color. Who knows? You know, I mean, that is what it is. But other than that, I mean, he's playing for Tiraso, the 135, so he, he can't be trash. They don't do that out there, they only take quality. So he should be a pretty good guy, and I, I expect big things from him. Uh, what about you guys? Yeah, I actually met him in person and I trained with him. You know, the Stockholm group, we had our little meetup and we were out there all at um, Zink is down EP. And mm -hmm. he has an arm. He throws a beautiful touch pass. Um, but everybody looks good while you're working out. You know, 
from the quarterback yeah. position, you know. Uh, I mean, I, necessarily, I can't even say that. Not everyone looks good from the quarterback position just in training, but he, he looks very impressive. But the thing is, and the question that we all want to know is, how is he going to perform on the field? And also, how you can perform in Europe? Because he only has played uh, in America and the collegiate level. And playing football in Europe can be different. You know, we've seen some people come over here to Europe, struggle at the quarterback position. Um, but he's a good guy. He's a good guy on and off the field. Uh, and I'm excited to see how he's going to play. And I do think that he's going to be a good player for tier so. And the last thing that I'll mention, I think that if we do a quarterback comparison, I think, I think he may be a Justin Field type guy because he does have some speed and he can throw the ball and he low key looks like Justin Field. That's on Jay. We call him Jay. So we just call him Jay. Okay. What about you, Antoine? Any yeah. thoughts on Jay? Uh, yeah, I don't have much to add, uh, add on Jay uh, other than I'm excited to see him play. I mean, I know the, the quarterback types that Tito Sill likes to bring in. Uh, last year they had uh, Hamish out there, so he could he was dual threat quarterback, uh, running and passing. So um, if he fits that build, then, you know, they, they, they're in good hands, and I think he'll be decent for uh, Tito Sill this year. All right, moving on to the next guy, we have – CJ Fowler from the Oslo Vikings. Another guy, I don't I don't know much about CJ. I, a quick, you know, Google search says that he played with the Swarko Raiders last year, um, with the Tucci Falcons in Poland, and he played at Western New Mexico University, a D2, and also played at Mississippi Valley State University, which was a D1 back in college. I don't expect any of the quarterbacks in the Super Series to be bad. That's baseline. He's going to be a good quarterback, but he's going to be playing in Oslo, which is a little bit different than playing in Sweden. So it's going to be interesting to see how him and his team jail going into this season. I think if he has any experience, like what his bio says, he has experience playing in different places in Europe, he should be fine. But I don't know much about his skill set, but I am interested to watch and see what he brings to the table. Just as you, I don't know much about him as well, but I'm excited to see how he's going to play. We all know that Oslo is a good organization historically, so he's going to have weapons at receiver. So let's just see how he gets the ball to them, and we make our assessments on him later in the season. The same as you guys, yeah. I don't, I don't know much. I'm excited, definitely excited to see him play. I'm excited to, to watch Oslo play in general. Uh, I'm definitely excited to see how he does at the quarterback position uh, for them. We'll see. Next guy we have is Trevor Vasey or Vasey. I'm not 100% sure how to say his last name either. He's been there long enough that we said it before the show, too, that he's not even going to be uh, an American this year. He's going to be Swedish status because he's – just when I say them, I, I say the wrong name. But he's been at Oregon for the last few years and kind of made a, a home there. My initial thoughts on, on Trevor at quarterback is – Whew, a real quarterback, not none of these five, ten, six foot suckers. Trevor, six <laughs> four, all of it. Got that old. Uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say Peyton Manning build, but the stature. I'm trying to think of a quarterback that would actually lean to it. I mean, Jared Goff maybe, but I would, I would actually say he probably has a little bit stronger arm than Jared Goff. You know. But that's kind of the build he has. And for me, that's, you know, old school, prototypical quarterback. But he, he's also sneaky athletic, something that a lot of people don't give him credit for is he's not the type of that's going to, you know, sprint and scramble and get you 50. But he does that that really good, like Aaron Rodgers type slide in the pocket just enough that he's able to plant his foot and put more into his throws. So really, really excited to see how he goes into this season and what kind of elevation they have for him with Orobru because that offense has to elevate this year for them to actually, you know, compete for the title. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, yeah, Trevor Trevor is just one of those guys. I think from from like a team standpoint and, and the trust level in their quarterback, I think he has the most trust at that position. So he get, he's going to throw the ball. Like I think a few games last season, he threw the ball over 30, well over 30 times uh, in a game. He does have the opportunity and get the opportunity to throw the ball a lot. Uh, he has a strong arm. Like he can put the ball with the Lindias brothers, it allows him to be able to put the ball down and field like seventy yards, and he could he could get it there. So if they get behind you, he can definitely get you the ball, no matter how deep you are down the field. The sneakily athletic, uh, like Purvis said, if he gets out of the pocket, he is hard to get down because he he he's big, he's stocky, he's a big guy. So um, yeah, I'm, 
I think last year was kind of like a down year for uh, for him uh, as far as play wise, but um, I'm looking forward to him having a bounce back year and um, yeah, man, putting some more touchdowns, a few more touchdowns on the board, and uh, a few more passing yards. He could be in a position to be uh, the quarterback of the year, honestly, with the amount of times that with the amount of opportunities he gets to throw the ball. So we'll, we'll see. And those Lindas brothers catching the ball, so yeah. You know. Yeah, so my last thoughts on just to add anything towards Trevor is that, you know, I've seen him play um, just watching football in Air Brew. He's a good quarterback. He is a quarterback, legit quarterback, and he has a few weapons to throw the ball to. So I'm excited to see him play this year. He has uh, weapons, as I said. And I think that with these weapons and, you know, him just being there for some years and being comfortable there, I think that he can make a legitimate chance if he get that chemistry with the teams to be in the Super Serian Finals this year in 2024. And the next guy we have, Slade Jarman, quarterback for Karlstad Crusaders. Another guy I don't know much about, but I mean, I expect great things. Uh, quick look online, 6'4", 220, played in the uh, ELF last year for the second mm -hmm. half of the season. Put up like 2K yards. I mean, sounds like a gunslinger to me. And I like it. <laughs> I'm looking for a gunslinger. So I'm excited to see what uh, Slade can do. I mean, I also like the name Slade. Last name yeah. Jarman, I'm not, not a fan of that. But your name is Slade. That, <laughs> that means something. You got to have a little bit of something to you, man. Uh, I'm excited to see how this – and another big quarterback. I, I'm a fan of the big quarterback, so I'm excited to see how he plays. That's all I got on him. And he's a lefty, too. We all Oh, wow. Him. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, I don't know. The Swedish receivers are used to seeing the ball come out of a lefty hands. You know, it got a little different spin to it. <laughs> got a little different spin. But yeah, I wasn't playing the ELF. Um, he, he's a good quarterback. So welcome to the Super Serious. Uh, good luck to you and guys. Make sure you're watching him this season. Yeah, I don't have much. Uh, I haven't seen him play. Excited to see him play. Uh, obviously, um, six four. You know, big guy. A big quarterback, a big arm. So, um, yeah, man, just excited to see him play. And I, uh, him at quarterback allows uh, Alvin, who played quarterback for uh, Costa last year, it allows him to focus on receiver this year. So uh, I think they uh, are putting a lot of trust uh, in Slade at that quarterback position because last year was kind of like uh, juggling quarterbacks um, throughout Costa last year. So I'm happy to see that they, they bring in an actual 100% quarterback who can uh, impact that side of that football for them. I hope they bring Alvin back to the quarterback position at some point, though. I like him throwing the ball. I don't know what you guys thought so, but that's another podcast, not for today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next quarterback we have is Mateo Renteria, quarterback from Stockholm Me Machines. Another new guy. I guess a lot of the new guys, we don't really know anything about them. So it's not much we could do besides, you know, speculate. But again, it's going to play for the Me Machines. We've named all the great players they have. He will be fine. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done much research on him, and I'm not going to. I'm just going to let his play show me if he's actually good or not. But I do think he's coming into a really good situation. And if he doesn't play well, then he's trash. Like, that's just – it is what it <laughs> is. I can play quarterback for the Me Machines this season. Like, it's, it's not that spot. So he should have a good season. But we'll see if he's, like, the difference between, you know, them being – good at or being even dominant this season yeah if stockholm does not perform the way that they do i'm just blaming him because you have way yep. too many <laughs> weapons if you get scared just toss it to one of your running backs you have matt to just throw the ball up to now i have no idea who he is and maybe i'm speaking a little bit with my emotions right now because i wanted mark pappas to come back again i was looking forward to seeing him play <laughs> I'm going to just say this, Mateo, welcome to the Super Series. Welcome to Sweden. Uh, welcome in. And you have big shoes to fill, buddy. I don't have much to add. Um, like you guys, I haven't seen him play before. But if there's any quarterback who is immediately on the hot seat and has the most pressure in the Super Series, it, it's him. Mark has been the best passer in, in football for, in Sweden for the past couple of seasons. So he has ginormous shoes to fill. But um, like you guys have both said, like, you know, he has all the weapons. He has everything that he needs to win. He just has to, you know, just go out there and do your thing. But he does. But he he does have the most pressure out of any of the uh, quarterbacks in the Super Series coming into this season. He has the most pressure. So moving on to the the last guy, uh, what's his name? Myron Norfleet, quarterback Myron Norfleet. from 
Yeah, I'm gonna call, start calling it K Towns just so everybody knows. K Towns. Start calling it K Towns. K Town. Yeah. K Town Predators, baby. K Town. Yeah. That's one of the K-Town. hardest cities to pronounce for us Americans. You know, like I'm not Consta. You know, anytime I try to say it decently right, they always like Consta. I'm like, all right, you know what? All right, <laughs> cool start. You know, let's call it cool start. You know, K Town Predators. But K-Town he's a new beast. quarterback. I will start off mm-hmm. with this one. I don't know much about him either. Either way, I know that. He's down there in the South, and they have some good competition. So, meet some good players, I rather should say. And I think that he's going to have someone to throw the ball to. And uh, I do see that he's an exercise science guy, so he's a a trainer. So, I think that he's going to be putting in work, and I think that he's going to be somewhat decent down there. Good luck to you. Welcome to Sweden. I watched him play last year uh, in Division I. Uh, He's definitely a dual threat quarterback. Uh, He can make plays with his arm and his leg. he doesn't make too many mistakes either. So he, he's not going to try to force the ball anywhere that it's not going to go. Um, he has that ability where if the, the receivers are covered well, and he's just going to run and he'll get you 10, 15 to 20 yards. So he, he does have that breakaway speed. So yeah, I'm excited to see how he does this year with uh, a little bit better competition. Uh, see how he adjusts to life in the Super Series. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Pro Football Sweden. Guys, any last words before we go? Alpha, anything you want to say to the fans out there? I just want to say to all the new players that's coming to the Super Series, good luck to you guys. All the players that we have mentioned, please, 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 don't let us down and start slumming this year. <laughs> if you don't know what that word slumming is, like, you're not doing good. And to the fans, you know, Follow us this year, you know, stay tuned. We're going to be bringing content every single week on the Super Series. Uh, yeah, Oscar Nee. Puss a crumb. All right, Antoine. Yeah, man, uh, just thank everybody for the for the support so far uh, on this podcast. Uh, continue to uh, like and share all of our uh, content and continue to watch and support the channel. I mean, uh, we're doing this just for you guys, uh, doing this to highlight football in Sweden. Uh, to all the new players, welcome to Sweden. To all the old players, you know. Continue to do your thing, play well this year. Uh, to all the players in the Super Series and coaches as well, uh, good luck and uh, yeah, have a good season. Yep. So good luck to all the players this season. Uh, we'll definitely be watching you guys um, right here on the Pro Football Sweden Pod. And if we left you out, that's okay. We're going to be watching you and we'll be talking about you during the season. So you know, if you felt like you you should have been on this list and you're not on the list, then make us watch you and, and we'll watch you. That would be pretty cool. Uh, please like, follow, subscribe, follow on all social channels at Pro Football Sweden. See you next week.